Okay, EB. Let's um, have a run through this. So, not sure why I've got the bold in here, but there we are. Don't need a capital D for drama. Uh, when you say Ben Thomas, I would say uh, it tells the story of how Ben Thomas, and then in brackets put Will Smith to show that you know who the actor is. Um, I would say to give away parts of his body to deserving candidates there, okay? Um, Maybe you put a significant mise-en-scene in this shot just to say, okay, that, that's the important kind of mise-en-scene. Yeah, good. Uh, I would just say brings tension rather than brings on. Maybe that, a, is it a death or do you think the protagonist's death? Um, that the protagonist's death. Good. I'm just reading this as I go, so I've got to hear now. Um, a match on action cut of Ben texting on his phone. Uh, I don't think you need to say match on action here. Um, talk about the shots that are used. Hang on, I'm just going to pause this and have a look at the um, have a look at the piece. Okay, I'm back. So I just watched the sequence just to get clear on it. Um, Yeah, I th you might want to say something. Do you remember when we talked about how over the head is very common for um, bird's eye shots in film uh, are very often used to symbolize the death of the character shown, something like that. Um, I think you need to say, uh, I would say a short underwater pan shot because you could make it clear that the camera is underwater at this point. Um, maybe this time call it an overhead shot, another overhead shot is used. It doesn't come up, you know, they're doing everything is deliberately here. Um, I think you should say about the non-diagetic music that it starts to feature voices. There's this kind of heavenly choir here, which connotes death as well. Uh, almost, uh, almost in the style of a requiem. If you look at what a requiem is, I mean, it's like a hymn that's sung when people, uh, are dying or in memory of people. Um, willpower is one word. I would call it the bath, unless you're American. Uh, I would say connoting here, popping with veins, connoting that the sting uh, or the poison, the venom, let's say, uh, the venom has caused Thomas's heart to beat at a very rapid pace, something like that. Following a further bird's eye shot, um, Muccino places the audience back in the character's mind, okay? Because we don't go back in his mind, it's, that's the shot is used to do that, to give us that idea. Um, 
Really? Two seconds? Is that true? Let's just have a look. We talked about the ice. I mean, there's a, there's a kind of connotation with the ice as well. I mean, it, it, and this shot might be worth describing this shot of his fiance, this flashback, um, cause it links up with them lying on the road towards the end, doesn't it? So here's the voices, and it's almost like this is the angel of death. You might want to say something about that, the appearance of the jellyfish. I want to see this shot in the woods. There's your other overhead shot, yeah. Come on now, two seconds. What's that? Less than a second, I would say. Do your timing on that. Um, okay. Uh, I would say emphasize uh, the character's pain, the character's increasing suffering, something like that. Okay, I need to look at this blurry bit again. I'm just going to pause you again. Okay, I think um, I wouldn't say the camera is blurry here. Um, you'd say something like Machino uh, uses uh, another flashback in a very short tracking shot, the audience see Ben running towards the remains of the overturned bus with bodies lying on the road. A handheld camera is used here to communicate to the audience uh, the chaos that surrounds him and how the car crash uh, has affected him, something like that. Um, I would say violently rather than viciously here. Um, so now you need to say something about um, a parallel edit. Um, this parallel editing continues or uh, the sequence continues cross-cutting between the flashback and the scene with Ben in the bath. I wouldn't say match on action here, you know, we, it's, that's what's happening most of the time. Yeah, and I would say here this, um, this juxtaposition uh, suggests to the audience or links for the audience uh, the pain that he felt uh, when he saw his fiance dead uh, to the sting of the jellyfish that is killing him. Something like that. Um, the other thing I would say, if you want to make a more sophisticated point about the camera work, the very shaky camera work there, I think, uh, connotes the, the chaos and the lack of control he has, whereas it's a very still camera in um, those shots at uh, the end in the bathroom, which kind of suggests an inevitability that he is in control there uh, and that this is going to happen um, because he's planned it so carefully. So there's a kind of um, almost sort of subliminal message to the audience about the difference between these two situations that comes through the camera. I'm going to run out of time now, so I have to make another film. So I'll finish this.